Hi guys, welcome back to Scott Family Homestead. Today we are prepping for winter. So we have hit that time of the season when we are exhausted and we are tired. But before the snow flies, we got a bunch to get done. So we're gonna work through some of these projects today. I'm gonna clear out some of these beds. Yesterday I actually came out here and clipped all the rest of my herbs and got them into the freeze dryer. So I've got that load running right now. Uh, but I do have some of these garden beds still have carrots in them that we are going to pull. I've got my bunny hutches. The bunnies have moved into the house now, and so they don't need these hutches until next summer. I got my bunny hutches, my green stalks, my patio furniture, all of that needs to get put away. And then in the high tunnel, we're going to rip up all of the plants. Uh, so that includes taking all of the twine down because we do Florida weave. So we're taking all the twine down, tearing out all those plants. I had blight pretty bad on my tomatoes this year. So we are going to burn all of that plant material just to get it uh, if it has any of that residual bacteria in it, we're gonna get rid of that. And then I'm going to amend in there a little bit. We're gonna put some fertilizer down. And then my last big job is planting garlic. And so I have a pound of garlic. This is stuff that I grew this year. I bought garlic at the farmer's market last year and planted that and I got some really nice bulbs this year. And so we're gonna get this planted. Planting garlic is really easy. The tricky part is remembering to do it before the snow flies. You gotta do it before winter so it can overwinter. If you plant this in the spring, you might end up with just one big bulb of garlic. Uh, so if you want the cloves like this, you gotta plant it in the fall. So what we'll actually do is pull this apart. We're gonna pull each of these little cloves out of here. Each clove will make a bulb for next year. I decided to do them in my raised beds here just because I don't have a real clear plan of what I'm doing in the high tunnel next year or what I'm gonna do with my exterior in-ground garden. Usually harvest this in July and then I can use these same beds and plant some greens that will be kind of a fall garden. So it'll work pretty good out here. I only have these four little raised beds. These are just Amazon cheapies and they'll work fine for this, but I don't know if it's a totally long-term plan out here. Hi, sweetheart. So we're gonna go ahead and get started on some of these projects. We have a lot of stuff to do uh, overall. We've got just stuff that needs to get put away for winter. We gotta take the farm stand down. We've got firewood to stack and split and cut. Um, we are switching pastures with all of our cows, kind of getting everybody rearranged for breeding purposes. We brought all the girls that were in the other field uh, back over to our main home field for the winter and so we're kind of managing all of that as well. It's kind of a tricky balance. We've got three separate pasture areas over here uh, but it's a tricky balance of keeping the girls that we don't want bred in one area and the babies that we don't want bred you know and, and then we've got our milk cow which we have to separate from her baby overnight and so we're kind of just always like shuffling cattle these days but we're getting close to the time when everybody can kind of go in together. So anyways, it's that changing seasons. We've lost most of our leaves. Just kind of getting ready for that snow to fly because it could be, could be like last year where we don't get a whole lot of snow or it could be like the year before where we really get quite a bit. Uh, we definitely are going to watch this high tunnel very carefully. This is the Glacier Greenhouse from Grower Solution and it does shed snow really well but we have to be careful about where we put that snow so it doesn't accumulate on the sides and so we're going to be watching the snow very carefully with that. Ideally adding a little bit more support in here to handle a bigger snow load but we're just gonna have to see how that goes. The main goal right now is to keep snow away from the base and to make sure it is shedding that snow or we are removing it. Got my boys working in here. They're pulling back all this twine. You can see it did frost in here. We did not attempt to heat this in any way. We just let the frost get to it. It did last a little bit longer than our outdoor garden beds. This kitty's been sneaking in here, I think because it's warm. I found him in here yesterday too. So anyways, we're gonna leave the T posts up because I'm gonna run my rows the same way next year. I already have the irrigation in here set up for that. So the main goal is just to get all of this plant matter pulled out of here. We're saving the sunflower heads. I've got a big sunflower garden out there. We're gonna save all the heads off of that for the seeds just so we can replant for 
cut flowers next year. And then, yeah, getting all this stuff out of here, getting garden tools. I've got like little random tools all around in here, all that picked up. And then we got to blow out all of our irrigation so that we don't have any standing water in here that could freeze up. And then this is ready to just kind of hang out until springtime. I'm not entirely sure if we're going to try to do a spring garden in here. I didn't have this up in time to do it this year, so I didn't get a chance to put any greens in here or anything. But I think I'm going to try to kind of push my season in the spring. I know that's when I have more energy and more motivation. I wanted to do a fall garden of greens and kale and stuff, but it just fell through. We got exhausted very, very quickly this fall and kind of overwhelmed. So nothing really happened in here. But I do want to try that in the spring when I've got a little more energy to do that kind of thing. We're going to go ahead and get these rabbit hutches put away too so that they don't get damaged. Mm, beans. You want some beans? Yeah, the dry. So cool, buddy. There's lots of dry beans in the uh, greenhouse too. That one. That was a good one. Can I carry it? Savvy, can you get it? Savvy, you did it! Just Savannah, you want to do this one? This one right here. Pull that one. Pull that carrot. Okay, we got this all cleared out. It's nice and flat. We're ready to plant our garlic. So we're gonna go pointed side up and you just put in a single clove. I do these two inches apart. You can put them in pretty close. And as long as they have room so that each one next to each other can bulb up pretty good, you're gonna be all set. Now, one thing about these raised beds, I put in here garden soil and potting soil in the spring but I, I grew carrots, which are a root veggie. Some people are really strict about crop rotation. Like if they have a root veggie in a garden area, they won't do another root veggie, like garlic, in that same bed. And I actually do try to do this quite a bit. You rotate through different things. So if you had carrots or something that was like a really root heavy vegetable, you would plant a leafy vegetable the next year and rotate through it like that. I don't have a whole lot of space, so this is kind of my only option but it's gonna be really important that I amend this garden bed because being a container bed like this, you kind of have to assume. Over the course of the summer, I grew a large biomass of carrots in here and those took up all that nutrient. So I am going to amend this when I plant my garlic and then I like to fertilize twice while the garlic grows. So once again in the spring and then once at maybe the end of May, beginning of June when we've got about a month left. If you're growing in any kind of container, you have to assume that what you are growing is pulling up and depleting that soil. So this does not have a whole lot of value left to it after I grew in it this year. Now I had that, that potting soil which feeds for nine months or whatever it says. So I didn't have to fertilize at all this year. I just used what was in here. I could just top this off with potting soil and mix it in. That would have the fertilizer that would be good. Uh, but what I have actually is bunny manure and bunny litter. So once we get all of this garlic put in here, we will top it with that and then we will put some straw on it. But I definitely recommend fertilizing your garlic even when you're just first planting it, uh, even though it's not gonna be growing a bunch right at this season. All right, so we're just gonna go ahead. Uh, now this is nice and fluffy. We can just kind of push these all in. You want them about an inch underground? Yeah, go ahead and just push it on in. And try to Garlic is easy too. If you don't wanna designate a certain spot to it, you could just do like the front of all of your garden beds. We 
got 60 cloves in here and it took about half of this garden bed. Now I'm just gonna cover them up nicely with soil. We use a compostable litter for our rabbits so we can dump the whole thing on here. So it's not as much as it looks because some of it's just like a papery product, but uh, there is enough in here that it's going to fertilize it really nicely through the winter. Now you can move on to the next project. It's as easy as that. It takes just a few minutes. Uh, you can get your seed garlic. You can order it from a company. Uh, like I said, I got mine at the farmer's market. Just look for nice big bulbs and you can usually buy it by the pound. And then every year, save your biggest, best bulbs as your seed garlic and plant those and use the smaller ones in your cooking. And then every year you're gonna get a really nice harvest because you're keeping the best genetics. You can keep your garlic going for a really long time, but if you end up getting a harvest that's real small, start over. Buy some new seed garlic. Um, I like the music garlic. That's probably my favorite. We do hardneck here. Um, if you are in the north, you're going to want to do hardneck garlic. You also get the benefit of scapes from those. So that's nice. But in warmer areas, you're probably going to want to go with the softneck garlic, which I don't know a whole lot about because I've never planted it before. We just do the hardneck here. All right. The biggest, biggest part of this, keep your chickens off of it. If you have chickens, they will want to get in here and they will pull up your garlic and it'll undo all the work and you're going to end up planting them over and over. Especially once you lay the straw down, they're like, ooh, something good to dig through. So we have this all fenced and they should stay out of here so we should be good to go. So I'm going to take this twine and I'm just going to pull it like fishing line because it's cut on the other side. So, then we're gonna come down here, pull all of the twine off of the like little weeds, and we have this loose bit. What we're gonna do to the loose bit is we're gonna take the two strings connecting it in that kind of like triangle pattern on the T post. We're just going to take those two strings and just cut them. And then put the twine in the twine pile. And then you're done. Just do the lower level. Hi guys, it is the next day. Uh, my intention was to finish this video today and show some more of our winter prep, um, but we got dealt kind of a rainy, dreary day. And so we're just inside today. We did feed all the cows. Uh, we're weighing our piglets today. We do have some piglets for sale and kind of wanted to get an idea of where they're sitting at. And just a couple little odds and ends. Uh, but we still need to pull all of that uh, dead plant matter out of the greenhouse and get that all taken care of, but it's going to have to wait for another day. So thank you for hanging out with me and for Harrison. He was very excited to film a clip and be part of our video today. He's having a little bit more interest in the making of videos and stuff and I wanted to give him a chance for that. We appreciate you following along, subscribing to our channel. We're also on Facebook and Instagram. We'd love to see you over there and I will catch you on the next one. Okay, bye guys!